Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror thriller films from 2005, titled Hostel. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie starts in a spooky setting, where someone is seen cleaning up a slaughterhouse. Blood and teeth which had undoubtedly gotten chipped off by an unknown person were seen falling. Later on, three students namely Paxton, Josh, and Oli are seen walking down the busy streets. Paxton and Josh are grad students from America, who travel across Europe with their Icelandic friend, Ali. While this was the primary reason for their visit, Paxton and Josh had both suffered bad breakups, and were both looking for some sort of distraction or a way to get over them. In the Netherlands, they visit an Amsterdam nightclub, followed by a brothel. After having fun all night, the three of them return to their lodging, but the doorman refuses to open the door, because it's way past curfew and they're all drunk. The drunk trio make a racket outside as they attempt to convince him to open the door, but their neighbors hit them with a couple of flying objects and swear words. Luckily, someone from the next building calls for them, and the trio decides to climb up the walls of the building, and enter the man's room through an open window. Inside the room, Oli, Paxton and Josh introduce themselves to the man who invited them in, Alex. Here Alex learns how the trio had plans to hook up with girls over their vacation. Alex offers himself to help them out by getting them some hot girls, and shows them pictures of himself with some of them. He also tells them of a hostel in Slovakia where hot girls chased after foreign men like ants after sugar. And the good thing is, they didn't even have to pay for it, because these women were so in love with foreign accents that they would gladly sleep with their owners. Alex also convinces them that they should visit this dope hostel in Slovakia that they won't find in any guidebook, and is full of beautiful women. The following morning, the three friends waste no time in making their imaginations a reality as they leave on the first train to Slovakia. The trio sit together in a booth, but they're joined by a Dutch businessman, who engages them in idle talk, and shows them a picture of his daughter. The boys tell the man of their plans to visit Slovakia, and the man tells them that the women in Slovakia are amazing. Things get more awkward as the man pulls out a lunchbox and starts eating with his hands. The boys ask if he needs a fork, but the man simply informs them that he likes to have a connection with something that dies for his sake. Out of the blue, the man touches Josh's leg and Josh gets irritated by this. The man leaves in a hurry, and Paxton and Oli burst out laughing. Sometime later, they eventually arrive in Slovakia, and they're stunned when the environment looks like a desolate area with nothing but wastelands. They board a taxi to the city where they can see numerous breathtaking tourist attractions. Once they arrive at the hostel, the boys are wowed as the lobby they step into seems to be filled with gorgeous ladies. They check in with a lovely receptionist, Vala, who informs them that they'll be sharing a room with other people. As they enter their room, they meet two Slovakian women named Natalia and Svetlana, and both girls invite the boys to join them at the spa. After spending time at the spa, they enjoy themselves at a disco. The ladies act like hostesses and treat the boys with as much care and respect as was commonly reserved for a king. Oli is having the time of his life with the receptionist, Vala. And moments later, Josh feels a little uncomfortable around them, and steps out for some fresh air. Surprisingly, he runs into a group of not-so-friendly kids who try to rough him up. Luckily for him, he is saved by the businessman from the train who pays them off. Josh offers to pay for his drink, and expresses regret for acting so irrationally on the train ride. Later on that evening, Paxton and Josh sleep with Natalia and Svetlana. Strangely, the following morning, Josh and Pax discover their friend Oli has not returned yet, and find out that he checked out and left without saying a word. No one simply does it. What's more, the two are then approached by a Japanese woman named Kana, who shows them a photo of Ali and her friend Yuki, who is also missing. Oli left with an arbitrary Japanese girl, and he doesn't even like Asian girls. Therefore, Paxton and Josh attempt to ascertain his whereabouts, right when they stumble upon the group of dangerous kids again, who ask for bubble gum, and Josh gives them some. After getting past that gang of kids, they suddenly get a text from Oli, saying he went home. But little do they know that Oli's head has been severed at that moment, while Yuki is being tortured by someone. Okay. 
Sensing something's off, Josh is anxious to leave, but Paxton convinces him to stay one more night with Natalia and Svetlana. Paxton also invites Kana to join them on the train tomorrow because they'll be checking out at the same time. That night, once again Paxton and Josh decide to head out with Natalia and Svetlana for some drinks. But as they're drinking away, Josh starts to feel unwell, and decides to call it a night and head back to his room. As he reaches the lobby, he begins to get weak, and Vala the receptionist sends him to his room. We can see a man walk up to the room and stand there, staring at the unconscious Josh. Shortly after Josh leaves, Paxton also starts to notice that he's not feeling so great. But as he's on his way to the club's bathroom, he accidentally walks into a storage room, where he finds himself locked in, shortly before passing out there for the night. While Pax is sleeping, Josh wakes up in a torture dungeon. His fear intensifies seeing that he probably will not make it out to finish his thesis. Josh reacts as scared as anybody, as he sees a man wearing a face mask choosing a torture tool, a drill machine. Josh then gets drilled repeatedly. The torturer is revealed to be the Dutch businessman from the train all along. He claims that he always wanted to be a surgeon, but got rejected because of his tremor disorder. The businessman then removes his handcuffs, and opens the door, saying he's free to go. However, Josh immediately falls to the ground as it is seen that his tendons have been cut. As he crawls away, the psycho businessman slashes his throat and kills him. Back to Paxton, he wakes up, finally able to exit safely, and returns to the hostel. Strangely, he finds out that he's checked out, so he tells the new receptionist that he's not checking out and he requests one room. When he asks about the Japanese girl Kana, the receptionist denies seeing her, which means she's already checked out without him and Josh. After Pax gets another room, he is confused when he meets two new sexy girls inviting him to the sauna, just like when they got here the first time. With nothing else to do, he tries to find Josh. He pieces together where Josh or Oli could be with the earlier picture he saw, but his phone gets grabbed by those meddling kids. Frustrated, Josh seeks assistance from the police, who inform him that there is nothing they can do right now, and that if they see his friends, they will contact him. While walking towards his hostel, Paxton sees Natalia, so he follows her into a bar and confronts her. He sees that Natalia is with Svetlana, and tells them that he wants to know where Josh and Oli are right now. Natalia tells him that his friends are at an art show, and then takes him to the place with her friend. It's an old dilapidated building, the same one Pax saw in Oli and Yuki's picture on his phone. There are many rich people outside who come and return with their own bodyguards. Paxton asks the first person he sees what exactly it's like inside, and the man tells him he could spend all his money there. Natalia then leads him further into the warehouse to watch the show. However, when he walks inside, he is shocked to see that his friend Josh is a part of the show, being dissected by the man from the train. Paxton gets angry at Natalia, who laughs as she'll get a lot of money for bringing Paxton there, while Pax is dragged away by henchmen. The two large men drag him down a hallway, and he catches brief glimpses of the unspeakable horrors being committed against fellow human beings. He's taken to a room, then restrained to a chair for his eventual death, and forced to sit in the dark for some time. Soon another businessman from Germany comes in, and reveals that he specifically purchased Paxton because he is American. Pax gets clawed by the villain, and even speaks in his native tongue to plead with him. He commends Pax for being a pretty smart guy, but as Pax gag for trying to reach his heart. Lucky for Paxton, the torturer is indecisive about his murder weapon. However, soon he figures a chainsaw will work fine. When the man's about to slice Paxton open, he realizes that Pax is choking on his own vomit due to the gag. Wanting the satisfaction and the kill for himself, he removes the gag, and accidentally cuts off two of Paxton's fingers. But then, the torturer slips over the ball gag and falls onto the floor, with the chainsaw landing directly on top of him and cutting through his own leg. Pax hurries to get out of his confines, and shoots the villain right in the head. Up next, he calls for the security guard in another voice, and he shoots him dead, and takes his keys to free himself properly. Pax dresses up in garb that was often worn by the torturers, but hides as henchmen fill the halls. In this back room, he sees plenty of guts, and hides without question among a cart of dead victims. 
Just as they're taken away to be processed in the butchering room, he lays there pretending to be as dead as the bodies he's hiding with. Inside the processing room, he's shocked to see that Josh is next to be cut up. As the butcher is chopping up the body parts and throwing them into the furnace, Pax gets up and beats the shit out of him. He then escapes on an elevator, and makes his way through the facility avoiding detection as he goes. Paxton sneaks into a client's room where the torturers dress up. As he looks out of the window, he notices that the police are in on the whole thing. He cleans up before disguising as one of their clients, while the guards just realize they have an escaped prisoner. In the pockets of the jacket he got, Pax sees a business card for the Elite Hunting Club, an organization that allows rich people to kill and torture tourists. It even lists the prices for each kind of victim they desire, $5,000 for a Russian, $10,000 for a European, and $25,000 for an American. Suddenly, a goofy client walks over to Paxton, he claims it's his first time dealing in the business, but he's so excited about it. Making too much money is boring for him, so he wants something more exciting than the usual wild and crazy stuff. He shows a tattoo that all the clients are supposed to have, and wants to see Paxton's, but luckily, Paxton gets away from showing his hand as the henchmen order the goofy guy to leave to torture his tourist. Paxton then grabs the man's gun as he leaves, before hightailing himself out of the building. Luckily for him, he finds a car with keys in it. Just as he's about to ignite the car, he hears the terrified Japanese screams of Kana coming from the warehouse. Instead of choosing to just save himself with the opportunity standing right in front of him, he turns around, and runs back into the building. He then meets again with the goofball from earlier, who uses a blowtorch on Kana's eye, and shoots him dead. However, he is left to clean up the mess by using scissors to cut off Kana's dangling eyeball. Paxton sneaks out of the warehouse with an injured Kana, and manages to escape detection until he starts driving the cars. The other members of the organization notice them fleeing, and follow in pursuit. Still, the two make it to the street, but the only way safely is to leave this town by train. A truck passes by, and Pax sees his temptress Svetlana, and Natalia, along with Alex, the guy who told him to come to the hostel here. Here he realizes that Alex had sent him to the slaughterhouse, and Pax runs them all over, killing all but Natalia, who is then mercilessly run down by the men pursuing Paxton. Pax is then stopped again by the kids from earlier, but luckily he just so happens to have an entire bag of gum in the car, and gives it all to them. When the henchmen get stopped by the same kids, they think these kids are just worthless scum, and end up being brutally murdered by the kids. Pax drives as fast as possible, but comes upon a police stop. He remembers that the police are unfortunately not on his side, and sneaks out of the side door with Kana, before running through the woods down to the train station. But they still have to hide from the henchmen, who pursue them intently. While walking by a mirror, Kana sees her disfigured face, and loses all hope after seeing her face that way. She kills herself by jumping right into an oncoming train, spraying blood everywhere. Seeing this, Paxton uses the diversion to get on the train, and rides away to safety. However, as he's sitting on the train laying low, he hears a familiar voice and speech being given about how I prefer to eat my food with my hands. The train stops in Austria, and Paxton follows the man, and realizes that it's the Dutch businessman, the same man who murdered his friend. Paxton follows the businessman closely behind, and watches him as he meets his beloved young daughter. He is full of vengeance as he waits for the man to enter the train station restroom. Soon after, as the man emerges, he realizes that his daughter is now gone, and starts to panic as he asks if anyone has seen her. The movie ends with Paxton and the girl on a different train, with Paxton covering her mouth to muffle her screams. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Hostel 2005. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.